thought Paul Malinaji said it was a push. Didn't look like it, but let's carry on watching. So I'm going to use this shit. Get him out, get him out. Oh, stop! Stop right there. Let's go. It's becoming like a joke now. Anybody who thinks this is a competitive fight becoming like a joke now. I don't think, I personally, I don't think the guy's gonna box anyway. But you know, just to give him like a, a, a fair chance, you can put ankle weights on my ankles. You can tie this hand behind my back, and then uh, you can put like something here so that I can't keep my chin down either. So I can keep my chin up. So that way, it gives him a good target to hit. You know, and then and then you just have my left hand. You know, and then uh, we can do all that, and then we'll see if he can still beat him. Because who the fuck does he think he's gonna scare in a boxing ring? I mean, I'll put the camera guy against him and it'll be competitive in a boxing ring. You know? So when the heated discussion between Conor McGregor and Paul Malinaji happened, I was like, hmm, definitely something to look out for. So what I did, I inspected both people. Obviously, I knew the sparring sessions was happening. I knew Paul Malinaji previously, before the sparring, said some nasty shit a couple of months back, and Conor McGregor heard. I was just watching this guy speak like, who the fuck is he? And that disrespect led to McGregor inviting Malinaji to spar. Looked at his stance, looked at his approach, some similarities to Floyd. I didn't really give a fuck if those similarities or not. He was speaking a hell of a game. I said, bring this boy in here and let's fight. And he wanted to test, he wanted, he wanted to test what he's really about and so did vice versa. And obviously social media wise, I don't believe everything is legitimate, but oh well, blame me. So when uh, the sparring happened with Conor McGregor and Paul, I was like, okay, this is interesting. I kind of knew that the footage would leak. Whether that was done on accident or on purpose, you take your guess, but I'll choose mine. So before the fight footage was released, Paul Malinaji said this. Connor, we, made the, we did the interview. He said, yeah. he said you knocked his beard off. He said he slapped your nose off. Yo, dude, I mean, I, I, it's becoming like a joke now. Anybody who thinks this is a competitive fight becoming like a joke now. I don't think, I personally, I don't think the guy's gonna box anyway, but you know. It, just to give him like a, 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 a fair chance, you can put ankle weights on my ankles. Put ankles, you slow down my feet. You can tie this hand behind my back, and then uh, you can put like something here so that I can't keep my chin down either, so I can keep my chin up. So that way it gives him a good target to hit, you know? And then uh, and then you just have my left hand, you know? And then uh, we can do all that, and then we'll see if he can still beat him. Because who the fuck does he think he's gonna scare in a boxing ring? I mean, I'll put the camera guy against him, and it'll be competitive in a boxing ring. Now clearly, he's exaggerating saying that the cameraman will have a better chance, saying if he had some stuff on his chin and lifted up that he still hasn't got a chance. If he had ankle weights on, he still wouldn't have a chance. And guess what? Paul Malinaji's career has been exaggeration from the day one. That's where he got where he is. He's got a tough chin, his uh, athleticism, his durability. That's what got him where he is right now. He's not the most athletic, but he is still in the athletic bracket, if that makes sense. Hard work, dedication, got him where he is. Not that I believe that, you know, athleticism is the key to success. No, hard work is definitely part of it, a massive part of it. But he's a grinder, he's had some boys. Whereas Conor McGregor, he, he has he had boys, but in a much clever, clever way very tactical whether that's on social media or verbally or even in fights he doesn't just go and brawl that's not the aim of the game I also inspected both the fighters during uh, before and after a win or a loss and with Conor McGregor he's very very honest I admire that a lot about him that's one of the main things I admire about him whether in defeat or in victory he's very honest he doesn't make any fucking excuses the emotions after a loss like that you know it stings it stings real bad but this is the fight business I've been on the end of many defeats in my in my life and I've rose back so I will not shy away from it and um, I will not make excuses for it I will assess it and uh, come back whereas Paul Malinaji He's made fucking god loads of excuses. He keeps making them and making them. And kind of, he played the trick and it kind of didn't work to his favor. What he did was he basically bluffed it and said, oh, this, this, and this happened. 
uh, I won majority of the fight. Uh, the videos got edited. This comes down to my next point as well. People were saying, um, well, Paul Malinaji is retired. He doesn't, he doesn't box anymore. His last fight was on March in the O2 Arena against Sam, um, the English lad. I forgot his name, but his name was his first name is Sam. Uh, is it Hedgington? Something like that. I'm not a massive, massive boxing fan. I don't keep uh, up to date with everything, but I keep my tabs on stuff. Anyway, his last fight was on March the 3rd, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, this year. And him being an athlete for nine years straight, fighting, he's not gonna have all them months off. Even when you're retired, even myself, even I'm not fighting, even I'm not competing, I am still going to the gym, I'm still doing bits and bats, I'm keeping busy, but I'm not in fighting shape. Obviously knowing that he was going to go to Conor McGregor's gym to spot or camp, he knows that he needs to get in fucking shape. So he's only been out the game, what, six, seven months since his last fight? It's not like he's been out years and years and years. So there's no fucking excuse for that whatsoever in my eyes, not at all. Obviously I don't know his personal life, what he's been doing, that I do admit, but if I was a fighter, I would not take something that I wasn't ready for. He is not that stupid. So, down to the main important bit. My uh, predictions for the Conor McGregor and Floyd Money Mayweather fight. I really, really believe that... I say really, 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 really a lot. I noticed that. <laughs> what the fuck? So, I really do believe Conor McGregor will beat Floyd Mayweather. Couple of reasons here. One, because he's young, he's upcoming, his thinking is completely different to anyone else's. Two, Floyd has been out of the game a couple of years. And three, he's getting older. With age, you don't have that athleticism anymore. He even says it himself on numerous occasions in, uh, in interviews. So that kind of, it's not excuses. He does say it a lot of times, I've noticed in the interviews that I've been watching. He says it all the time that obviously I'm not young anymore. Um, which is fair enough, it's not an excuse at all. It's true. Why the reason I really want him to win is because right now, um, boxing and MMA are not on par on par. What I mean by that is, not, a fan, not from a fan's perspective, but as a fighter's perspective. I know boxers get a lot of more money for per fight, and that's just due to the circumstances of MMA being new, uh, only being one massive organisation, the UFC, Bellator is coming up now, um, one FC are coming up, they're, they're slowly building, they're slowly building, we're getting there, but it's a slow process. But what I think this fight will do is prove to, to the world that this martial arts is not to be fucked with. It is a really, really good at martial arts as an overall protecting yourself, um, longevity, feeling good, and as an overall martial artist. You know, we are not amazing at every single martial arts to a black belt degree, even though some UFC fighters are black belts. What I mean by that is the rule, the 10,000 hour rule. So if you do something in 10,000 hours, you are, uh, you, are, you are meant to be, you know, the, the shit at that. So because we do mixed martial arts, we do several martial arts and pick individually which ones we do. Then the hours we practice on them, uh, on them martial arts are a lot less. So we become better rounded, but not better at that specific thing. Whereas Floyd has been boxing since he was a little miniature baby, literally in his mother's womb, probably boxing, ducking, sliding. <laughs> But yeah, you get the point. So, MMA wise, I'm a, obviously I'm a mixed martial artist. I want Conor to win, but I also want mixed martial artists to be recognized in the world, just as it is in boxing. And I also want the fighters, the people who compete, to be paid for what they do, because it is a hard, hard sport. If you've not done it before, you obviously will not know what the, what the sacrifice is, and the sweat and the blood and the tears we go through. It is a very hard sport, especially the weight cutting is just, ridiculous on another level. Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, as much as <laughs> I literally saw the post this morning and I thought, right, I need to make a video real quick because it's something that's been, I've been itching to get at. So uh, when I watched the video of Paul Malinaji and Connor fight, 
uh, spy, sorry. I was, I was absolutely hyped. I was, it, it was no shock to me. I was completely, completely on Connor's side because not because I'm a massive bum boy of Connor's. It's because I analyse people well, and I'm, I'm good with people. And I know when someone chats absolute shit. But thank you guys for watching the video, and uh, next week we shall have a new one. Peace.